sharpen pencils, clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek. All right, hello, hello, hello. I'm Derek W. Truesdale introducing a new podcast, although we've done a couple episodes on YouTube, but I've been neglecting you guys, and here's why. And I actually, I was trying to dig up the comment, but there was someone who said this. I, I'd love to mention him, and I love honest feedback, which you get a lot of out there on the internet, but one guy, he's like, hey, Derek, ever s- since you started doing this live show, it just, I feel like you've changed. You're leaving us, man. You haven't done anything. And sure enough, I haven't done a lot of YouTube videos and stuff in a while because I thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun to build a live talk show in my own basement? And then I did that about a year ago. And I'm kind of in the swing of things there, but I want to move back to you YouTube folks. So uh, what better way than to have a podcast, which goes out to YouTube, and you could also download it on your pod, whichever pod device it may be. So that's the plan. Uh, The name of the podcast, of course, is Increase Your Nerdiness. And being programmer types, we call this episode zero. Man, a lot of my scripts start out that way. When, you know, programming things where it's like trim frame zero through frame. You know, that's how it goes. And that's kind of how we are. We are nerdy folks. All right, so let's talk a little bit, since it's the first episode, of what the podcast is. It's sort of, well, (laughs) if you haven't gotten it yet, it's for geeky kind of people. Um, And it it, it used to be, here's why I started out on YouTube. I should add this, I forgot to uh, mention. But way back on YouTube, in the old days of YouTube, way back in 2006, <laughs> is, uh, which is, what, like five years ago now, but back then, it was this stuff was all new. YouTube was a place where you could upload a video and then post the link and all your friends could see it and stuff, but the quality was awful. It was horrid. In fact, that's one of the reasons that it worked is because the video might have been lousy, but it wouldn't overload their servers because they didn't try to kill themselves on the bandwidth or anything. And that got them big enough so they could afford to get bought by Google, who can then afford to deliver just this insane amount of bandwidth to people. And since then, they've improved a lot. Well, back then, there used to be this holy grail where... If, if you could get a video with, like, just the right settings, it would squeeze through and it would not be reconverted by YouTube. So the same thing you uploaded is the same thing you got back. Now, if you're a control freak kind of person like me, it's like, yes, that's what I want. Let me do the encoding, not you. Well, thankfully, things have gotten better over time. For security reasons, you can't really slip a video by without it getting re-encoded anymore. But that's okay, because they've really improved things. So, the rule of thumb is, I mean, if you send them a video that looks really good, you might get it back looking kind of good, or internet good. And certainly much better than it has been before. They've made a lot of improvements there. So, this sort of led the focus of a lot of my guides and stuff to just be on general video making stuff. And How can I make videos better, especially on a low budget? And the the thing, personally, that I'm good at is sort of... I don't like to have little settings and stuff. Let's say you take a video editing program like Final Cut or or, uh, Adobe's Premiere, one of those things. I hate not knowing what the little settings do. Where it's like, okay, you can set the parody for top field first or bottom field first. And most people are like, what the heck? I don't know what this stuff is. But me, that bothers me. So I went and I figured out what a lot of those things do. Part of the confusion is they use the same... They have the same concept, but they assign different words to it, which can be really maddening. But once you get the basic principles of stuff, I mean, you can usually figure it out. So we're trying to teach a nerd how to fish, as uh, is the case may be. The other thing is, I'm kind of cheap. And I realize there aren't a lot of other podcasts out there that, that, that teach you how to do more with less. And my, I tell you, that's the name of the game with me. I'm not like this Mactivist type, you know, meaning someone who's like the Macintosh 
everything in my house is Apple kind of person. I, I'm, I'm kind of cheap. And so if there's a way to do a little more research and find out how to create a, a, a kludge, as they say, uh, to basically use equipment in a way it's not necessarily designed, but it, it, it solves a purpose. It, it fulfills its, its role, even though it's crazily rigged up, much like my show. That's kind of what I do. I try to squeeze as much quality I can through... The, a very limited amount of equipment. So I'm not just like, oh, I'll just buy this $5,000 thing. That'll solve my problem. Well, it doesn't quite work for me. So if you want cheap nerds advice on like how the cheapest way to wire a phone in your house or the cheapest way to hook up your own TV antenna, we have ways of doing it, and that's what you'll learn here. By the way, you ever heard of this iJustine Lady, I saw her on uh, Twit Live the other day on MacBreak Weekly, and and they were talking about, man, does anyone buy TV shows on iTunes? And she's like, I do. I buy them all the time. Now, me, I'd be like, if I had to pay $2.99 or something to watch the last episode of House, I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is unconscionable. I can't spend this much, much money. But that, hey, there are people who will do that. Uh, not just to poo-poo the idea that uh, sometimes your time is worth money. And, uh, I mean, there are people, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to knock them, really, that would rather spend money to solve a problem, but not me. If you want the cheap nerd skinny, that's what we're here for. And not just video stuff, but anything, really, that's of nerd interest. Now, I'm going to check up on the chat in case there's something incredibly profound Nah, it's just the usual grazers. <laughs> I say that because my wife's in the chat. By the way, you can find the live show if, if you're tuning in on the podcast or YouTube. Not that you actually have to tune like, on the radio dial or something like that. But but you can find me at DerekForPresident.com. I'll give more of that uh, at the end of the show. Anyway, today's lesson is about avoiding rendering. I'll give you an example. Uh, it was like Christmas Eve, believe it or not. And one of my friends on Facebook, who's like a, a budding filmmaker kind of guy, I saw this like urgent post. He's like, oh my gosh, if anyone knows how to use Sony Vegas, please help. And I was like, hey, that's me. I could, you know, so I ended up having a conversation with him. And it, it was funny. I had a spare moment. It was Christmas Eve, but that's how much of a geek I am. I'm sitting there like, uh, communicating on my phone about this. Anyway, there, there was a problem with if you tried to render this long video. And I, I, by the way, Mitten, if you end up watching this, I can promote your video or whatever on the next show if you send me a link or whatever. I'm not sure if he was putting in a film festival or something like that, but he had to get this thing rendered. And it would go to like 85% and then it would just stall. For some reason, there was like one frame that it had a problem with. And it wasn't rendering the whole video. And the only way to find out if it worked after you change something is to wait till it gets to 85%. Rendering time was a real big issue. So I was like, okay, let's, for now, let's split this into different parts, render them each, and then you can join them together. Because there are ways, without re-encoding the whole thing, to join two files together. And so that this is where something like that would come in handy. The other thing is you could, say, take a YouTube video or something and just pull out the audio stream only. Now, I've done this because there are places with video like Justin TV, for example, where I can't really watch it on my mobile device. It, it's just, you know, I got something else going on. I'd rather just, like, listen to it later. So I'll, like, pull these videos out of my cache and then take out the audio only and then just like zap it into my phone like that without re-encoding or anything like that again. Uh, the other place that it, it comes in handy is like, uh, well, let's say if you have an XVID movie or something and you want it to work on iTunes and thus your iPhone, which wouldn't you know it has famously has issues with flash videos, well, you can convert it into something else or sort of just put it in a different container so it'll work. And also, I've done this with uh, DVD cutting. If you need just one part of a DVD, you actually don't have to re-encode the whole thing. You can cut the MPEG stream. 
So there are uh, ways of doing that. Now, I'll tell you, the best way to do this, or sort of like the Swiss Army knife tool with all the attachments and stuff, is called FFmpeg. All right, so I have my command prompt window here. And there's actually, I have videos in this folder. Let's say I want to take the XVID stream or whatever from an AVI and then put it into an MP4 or something like that that QuickTime can play. Well, here's how you do it. You can look up in the documentation for the specifics on this. But I'm going to type FFmpeg space and then the uh, dash I. And that says, here's my input file. And appropriately, it's called <laughs> video.avi. That has my stream. Now, I also have another file, this video.aac, which is a more Apple-friendly way of doing this. And, I mean, you can have FFmpeg fix this, but you have to look through the documentation and stuff like that. This is for demonstration purposes. All right, so now I'm going to see, say, I'm going to say, rather, v codec copy and what that says is just take the video and copy it don't re-render it or anything and then I say a codec copy I don't have a fast computer so th this is gonna show how how well this works and then finally our output file name which will be video.mp4 see and hopefully if I have all that typed right I push enter it does a bunch of stuff and look it's already done. All right, so I'm going to try to show you a, another way of doing this. And we are going to use one of my favorite programs. So here's our video here that you're looking at in Virtual Dub. Virtual Dub Mod is a different flavor. There's, you know, you can do this with both of them. And if you click on Streams, I just show you go to Streams, and then there's like the available streams. You could, uh, you could actually add a WAV file like this. The other thing you can do is you can save it as a wave on your video. So let's say you have a video and you want to just take the wave audio from it like that. You, you could do all those things. All right. Now, some other useful programs or one big one is called YAMB, Y-A-M-B, which stands for yet another MP4 box program or <laughs> something like that. It's... Uh, what it does is you can take MPEG-4 files and you can take the streams out of them. You can join a couple of them together. We can create a file from different streams. Uh, editing is where a lot of the interesting thing is. Click here to split and join the files. That's one of the things you can do that really comes in handy. And of course, you can extract the streams right there. So that's another way to avoid rendering. And hey, why do it? If it's already been rendered, there's no need to do it again. One example is when you capture video from a camera, uh, for example, from DV tape. Guess what? Your camera actually did the rendering and encoding. You're just dumping a file onto your hard drive. Now, some people mistakenly think that it's uncompressed video, but it's not. It's already been compressed by the camera. You put it on the hard drive and you can work with it there. So again, I mean, there's, there's no need to do it if you don't have to. So those are the uses. You can join videos together. And of course, the videos have to have the same or very similar properties. Or else there's probably going to be a problem. I mean, if you have a small resolution, little tiny old-fashioned YouTube video, and then it's like, oh, here's an HD file too. Eh, don't count on that. But if you just want to pull one portion out or something like that, it can really save you a lot of time. So there you go, episode zero of Increase Your Nerdiness. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, you can check this stuff out once I get it up at the website, DerekForPresident.com. That's D-E-R-E-K. Don't add any extra letters. Spell out the entire word F-O-R. I know you Twitter folks want to just push the number four, but it's DerekForPresident.com. And welcome to my new podcast, Increase Your Nerdiness. Sharpen pencils, clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek.